uh, in IB, you take six subjects, three HLs and three SLs, three higher levels and three standard levels. Your grading system is from one to seven, seven being the highest and one being the lowest. You take three core parts of the program, which is your TOK, Theory of Knowledge, uh, which focuses on epistemology and how we derive knowledge. Uh, your extended essay, which is a 4,000 word essay on any subject that you're taking in the IB. And your creativity, activity, and service, which is 150 hours um, in all, all sorts of different extracurricular activities. Uh, compared to the A-levels, their system is that they have three to four subjects. Um, you might get an extended project, which would be something similar to the extended essay. Uh, you have a D to A star grading system. Um, in terms of the differences between the content of both uh, programs, the IB has a greater focus on skill. Questions are more abstract and focus on your skills and ability to answer a question. Meanwhile, A-Levels focuses more on the subject and the syllabus. Uh, questions are more straightforward. Focus on your material, knowledge, and syllabus. I think the main difference between A-Levels and IB is that the program IB will teach you why we learn. In IB, you will learn all different kinds of whys you've had in IGC. IB will push you to think and wonder why and how we learn, which is basically what the universities like to see from you and what they require you to do in the university study itself. Not only that, you will learn what they teach, but you will also be able to acquire different learning abilities. Other than that, Ivy will make you the all-rounded student, as you will need to learn all different studies from different fields of academy. The reason why I chose IB was because Although I was very sure of what I wanted to do, IB gives you so much of every single aspect. It prepares you for uni life um, way more than any other program possibly could because it allows you to do your own research, yet being lectured by your teachers, sitting in classes, and um, many universities also prefer IB over A-levels or OSMAT or over anything else. Personally, I think what makes the IBDP valuable is the fact that it gives us a holistic education. So it not just um, prepares us for exams, but it also teaches us how to approach project-based assignments, which I think is more prevalent in university. So I think that's the main thing that makes us stand out from the rest is because that we were taught beyond textbooks and beyond exam-based learning. What makes the IB distinct from its counterparts are the components of the course that enforces the IB learner profile. Essentially, the IB is the only course out there that's trying to get its students to be open-minded, um, analytical, to take risks, to think outside of the box in every single subject and in every single thing that they do within the course. These are all traits that not only will help you to succeed in the IB, but I think will also help you in the future at uni and in everything else that you do. Um, I'm going to say that time management is very crucial. In IBDP, you don't only have to cope um, with your own self-studies, but also coursework like IAs, um, EE, TOK, and also CAS. You really have to allocate your time efficiently to make sure that you have enough time to do one or another before the deadline. If you don't do so, trust me, you're going to be very stressed and the quality of your work might not be as good as you expect. Also, um, one very important thing is that you should, be, you should always be resourceful and find someone if you need help. Ask your friends or teachers if you need help because trust me, it's very useful and uh, you will be more stress-free at the same time. If you work alone, like a lone wolf usually, that probably um, might not help you in IB because in IB, we always um, talk about teamwork and together, we will strive for better. Yep. Try and finish everything at once at the highest quality possible. Do this because during the COVID-19 pandemic, my year group 
had our IAs used to evaluate our, the majority of our performance within the IB. So even if it carries about like a 20% weighting in most subjects, it's still very, very important and you should absolutely spend a lot of, a lot of time on your EEIA and TOK. Um, my second tip is be okay with failure. Those 90%, 95% you've been getting in IGCSE, they are not happening in the IB. You only need about 80% in most subjects to secure the highest grade, which is a level seven. So be comfortable with making mistakes. Don't panic if your percentage is lower than your expectations. Learn from them and move on. Finally, make sure your foundation is solid. The first year of, your, the, of the IB program is incredibly important. Do not slack off. This is where the most of the meat of the subjects will come into play. Meanwhile, your second year will usually be dedicated to HLs uh, or your HL topics. But your SL topics are incredibly important because they form the foundation of how you're going to be taking those exams and how you're going to be doing your IAs and every other part of the IB. So make sure that in your first year you are paying attention.